What's up, Greg, and welcome back to another episode of Diggy Gorgonzola. That's right, Diggy Gorgonzola, the internet's most notorious ripoff of Danny Gonzalez. So I've covered a number of mockbusters on this channel in the past, like Ratatouille and Plan B. Basically terrible, horribly made ripoffs of beloved animated childhood movies, like the B movie and Ratatouille. And today shall be no different because we're going to be talking about What's Up, a ripoff, of course, of the Disney movie Up. In a lot of ways, What's Up is just like Up. They go up in the air in a house, and that's pretty much the only similarity I can figure out. I guess I would say that What's Up is exactly like Up if you took all the heartwarming moments out of Up and replaced them with plot holes and racism. So yeah, this is gonna be a really good movie. So strap in, butter up some popcorn, and let's get ready to watch What's Up. So this movie starts off with a TV broadcast about the main characters of this movie. It explains that they're a family of monster fighting scientists. There's Uncle Crum, Amanda, Gunto, and Uncle Crum's partner scientist. It does not appear that he's related to them, but he is Uncle Crum's partner. They're one big happy family and they fight monsters from outer space. The possibilities are absolutely endless. Dr. Crum is a visionary. He is a warrior in search of the highest human ideals. But he's not just about spectacular contributions to science. He also happens to be the uncle of the lovely and most eligible young lady in our city, Amanda. So at first I thought this show was like a news program or like some kind of 60 minutes interview or documentary about this really interesting family of monster fighting scientists. I thought it was gonna talk about like the societal ramifications of monsters invading Earth, but then it took this weird like TMZ route or Hollywood fix route where they were like, and also they've got a pretty teenage daughter who's single. A little bit of a weird aspect of the family to focus on for a multitude of reasons. Fighting monsters from outer space is probably the most interesting thing that could possibly happen. And then there's this like family of genius scientists that can fight them? That's enough for the news to talk about for, I, I don't know, ever probably? So I don't know why they st like talked about that for 30 seconds and then got bored and was like, but hubba hubba, look at their niece, dude. That is one eligible bachelorette. And also she's 15. Maintaining her habitual discretion, Amanda avoids direct contact with the press and says that her only true love is science. However, insiders say she's been seen flirting with an actor in the local high school musical. Wow, Amanda, a teenage girl, is flirting with someone else who goes to her high school? Now that's some juicy, juicy gossip. Forget about aliens, forget about monsters, forget about science, all that. What that Amanda do? So. Kind of creepy that this new show seems to have like a really deep interest in what Amanda's up to, this like high school teenager. But also, not terribly unrealistic, I suppose. And here are the inventors of the intergalactic transmission antenna, the famous doctors Karam and Zooks. Lately, people seem to just want to know about the monster chasers and forget that we're serious scientists. I don't know, man. That seems pretty serious to me. You hunt monsters that are gonna, like, kill people. It seems like pretty important work, dude. Don't sell yourself short. I mean, the monsters are... The monsters are hurting people, right? They're not just like peaceful monsters. All people want to do is talk about how we kill these monsters. These big peaceful monsters from other planets. But honestly, we just do that for the goofs. Just because we like killing them. They don't pose any threat to us. But don't forget, we're serious scientists too. We do actually matters. We've developed a hyper light jet with a force strong enough to lift a house, as you'll see here. So how does this hyper light power jet work, doctor? You see, it's simply a rock of super energy that we created- Dr. Crumb, I don't hmm? think it's a good idea to mention this on TV! Yes, yes, right, that's true! We shouldn't reveal all of the powers of this super energized rock. I don't even want to imagine what awful things would happen if it got into the wrong hands! Oh, we certainly wouldn't want that, but can we ask, for example, about the powers this super energized rock has? Oh yes, we shouldn't talk about the powers that this rock has, but can I instead ask you, what kind of powers does this rock have? Well, one of its most nefarious features is it can, for example, hypnotize the entire Dr. world! Crumb, I think that's enough! Huh? What kind of rock is this? I thought it was like radioactive or something, like it has a lot of energy in it? That's how they described it, because it can like, make things fly. So I assumed it was just sort of, sort of like, uranium or something like that. But it can hypnotize people too? Imagine if other power sources had like crazy side effects like that. Like be careful about gasoline. It can power your car, but if you inhale too much, you'll 
I learned the ability to speak to fish. Solar panels are great for the environment. They're really great for cutting down on emissions. But one potential downside is that if you stare too deeply into them, you'll see your future in their reflection. On a really sunny day, you'll even see how you die. So be careful. This is just how these things work. It's science. That's science, you know? He knows that you have to activate it with a secret password. Lavender? <laughs> no one says lavender anymore! Now can we change the subject, please? So yeah, there's this rock, it's got crazy amounts of energy, it can make things fly, but it can also hypnotize people. So it's it would be very bad if bad people got a hold of it, but don't worry, because it has a code word to activate. You know how rocks do? And the code word is lavender, because nobody says lavender anymore according to old Dr. Crumb. You know how nobody says lavender anymore, ever since lavender went extinct? Remember the big asteroid that wiped out all the lavender? One thing I've noticed about this movie is that it's full of awkward pauses. Like, every time the camera moves, everyone stops talking until the camera finishes moving, which feels very meta. But if I use this control here, I'm able to go. But also, I like that the characters are, like, being considerate of the cameraman. They're like, oh, okay, oh, you want to move the camera? We can wait. As I was saying, this movie is 45 minutes long, but I'm convinced that if they cut out all the unnecessary pauses, it would be like five minutes long. No surprise to you if you've watched any of my other videos about animated mockbusters, but the animation in this movie is just... It's bad. It's really, it's atrocious. The way the characters move is really unsettling and robotic. Sometimes they just kind of float around without like, you know, bobbing like a normal person would when they walk. None of their mouths move correctly with what they're saying. The lip syncing is very off. Also, look at their nasty, grubby little hands. All the men have like rectangular fingers. Like they look like big fat french fries. Everyone's fingers in and they also only have four fingers, which I guess is pretty standard in cartoons, but it still freaks me out. Also, the soundtrack of this movie is top tier. I don't know if you noticed or heard it just there. Well, I guess I shouldn't really say soundtrack. It's more like one note. Played on a really old synthesizer. Mm. Just the whole movie. Really awesome soundtrack. Really gets you into the mood of what the characters are feeling. This arrow right on the top. Mm. Which <laughs> one? This one here? <laughs> oh! Ah! Oh my, they're dead. Those kids are dead, for sure. No doubt about it, they're dead. Wow! Oh. So that's the basic setup of the movie. They're all, they're scientists and they have a floating house. And a magic rock, and I hope nobody steals it. That's the premise. Later that day, the whole gang is having some tea and the doorbell rings. Amanda goes to answer the door, and it's a man by the name of Jean Pierre Delacroix. I am Jean-Pierre Delacroix, the great Amazon adventurer. For some reason, what's outside their front door is just another room. If you walk outside of their house, you're just in a room. So uh, what's up with that? I'm Dr. Crumb. It's my pleasure. Would you like some tea? No, merci. I am French. We drink wine. Oh, okay. So the French thing is just going to be like a fun little plot device for the writers of this movie to use really outdated stereotypes of French people. You know that classic stereotype where if you ask a French person if they want some tea, they'll get mad at you and say, No, we drink wine! In France, we drink wine! Only. No water. No tea. Just wine. So the reason Jean-Pierre is there is to ask for help. He says he was exploring the Amazon and he encountered a really gruesome monster in a cave and he wants them to come get rid of it. I encountered a terrible monster deep in a cave in the Amazon and he really, really needs to be chased. Wait, hold on. He, he was exploring a remote part of the Amazon and found a monster in a cave. Like, this monster wasn't attacking a village or murdering people. He's just, like, in a cave minding his own business. So Jean-Pierre went into this creature's habitat where it was just, like, hanging out and was like, somebody needs to kill this thing immediately. So the two old scientists don't really want to because they don't really like traveling and they're also kind of like, who is this guy? But Gunto, the youngest one, gets so excited about the prospect of chasing a monster that he goes and finds the button that makes the house fly. We're in the clouds! And th there they go. Off they go. They're to go fight a monster who's just chilling in a cave. The What's going on? <laughs> When we arrive there, you'll all be in for a little surprise. <laughs> I can't wait to hypnotize as many people as possible. So this is something Jean-Pierre does throughout the film. He'll like explain his evil master plan in very close proximity to people who he's trying to trick. I don't know how they don't hear him. It seems like a very silly thing to do as a villain. I also like how not concrete his plan is. He's not like, soon I will have the rock and I'll be able to hypnotize the entire world. 
and then they'll do my bidding and make me king of the world. Instead he's just like, I can't wait to hypnotize just as many people as I can. I sure hope I can hypnotize a decent amount of people. And when I do, <laughs> well then I'll just have to figure it out from there. So when they get to the Amazon, they head into the cave. Jean-Pierre stays outside, they keep watch, but really he's just, uh, you know, up to his evil. This is it! Let's go deep into the cave! Le monstro is horrible, and you're going to find out just how horrible. Slowest exit in the world. <laughs> My plan is working perfectly. <laughs> I like how quickly they recover from being unbalanced. They're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa! It's fine, we're fine now. Finally, it's my turn. My turn to put the whole world to sleep. Perhaps they'll do nothing, perhaps they'll blow kisses. I'm a genius. What is this dude's motive anyway? I think they just completely forgot to like make the main villain of the movie have some kind of motive or even a plan. He says he's gonna put the whole world to sleep. Then he's like, maybe they'll do nothing or maybe they'll blow kisses. I don't know. He doesn't even know what he's gonna do once he accomplishes his master plan. Like his master plan is just to do it, and then he's like, after that, I know. Imagine if Thanos from the Avengers was this poorly thought out. <laughs> I finally have all the stones. No! And now, I gotta, I'm gonna figure out what to do. I could give every mouse a top hat. Wait, you didn't, you don't know what you're gonna do yet? Hey, clearly I was busy collecting the stones, okay? Yeah, but then why did you even start collecting them in the first place? I thought I would think of something by now, okay? But I procrastinated for too long, and now here we are. Honestly, I feel like the top hat idea is pretty good. I don't know why you're trashing it. Maybe I can make every mouse look like a little businessman. They could have a little monocle and cane too. I don't know. You're so dumb. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You know what? Actually, I just thought of a great idea. How about I use my powers to make everyone be a little bit nicer to me? How's that for an idea? Oh my, you're, you're crying now? Honestly, I'm feeling a little bit attacked. That makes sense. We were all just trying to kill you moments ago. Wait, I got it. I'm gonna make everyone blow kisses. Le Vendeur! Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe it's my accent, perhaps? Le Vendeur! Le Vendeur! Le Vendeur! Le Vendeur! Le Vendeur! Okay, so then the most confusing series of events in the history of cinema happens. He's trying to get The Rock to work by saying lavender over and over, but he can't because he's French. Then all of a sudden this dude in a hot air balloon crashes like right in front of Jean-Pierre. It's like so coincidental that there just happened to be a dude in a hot air balloon flying over the exact part of the Amazon rainforest that Jean-Pierre is in. And also as he crashes, he spills a bunch of pictures of famous cities. He's like, oh no, my pictures of big cities. How am I gonna see big cities an anymore? How am I gonna know what those look like now? Then Jean-Pierre accidentally drops the rock and it makes this big glowing circle on the ground. And I bet you can guess what comes out of the big circle. Yep, that's right. Monsters, big alien monsters. And they're the scariest monsters you can possibly imagine. These monsters, you don't even wanna hear the sounds they make. The sounds they make are bone chilling, life changing, pants wetting sounds. I'm a monster. These three monsters find the pictures that the dude in the hot air balloon dropped and they're like, oh, these look like fun cities. I guess they are monsters that understand the concept of cities. So one of them finds Paris, the other one finds somewhere in China. They all find different places and they decide, hey, well, let's go terrorize these areas. And then, then off they go. And they jump there. Just one big jump and off they go to China. We mustn't forget to write the ETs to thank them for these lasers. So the whole family escapes from the cave and they don't realize Jean Pierre's done anything wrong because they just thought that the cave collapsed. But they do realize that all these monsters got let loose. So they all go together to go find the monsters. They capture one of the monsters and it's just floating outside of the house like this in a little bubble, which I think is pretty silly looking. Just a monster like mm -hmm, on the side of the house. They also use the guy's hot air balloon, you know, the guy that crashed to help the house float because the rock doesn't have any energy anymore. I don't remember them saying what happened to the guy in the hot air balloon like what did they just leave him in the Amazon because we don't see him for the rest of the movie probably because they didn't give him a weird nationality that they could make fun of so they were like well get, get him out get him out of here he's boring the rock will re-energize itself just give it a little time hmm. Hmm. lavender <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't trust this Frenchman. I don't know why you had to make it about him being French, but also, yeah, I don't think you should trust him. He literally, like, right there tried to hypnotize you. He was like, Lavender. I don't know about that guy. Why does he keep whispering to our rock? Also, how does a rock have a code word? How did they program a code word into the rock? How do you program a rock? So finally, they get to Paris. The monster is uh, still terrorizing the Eiffel Tower. He's just kind of swinging around on it and making some guttural sounds. <laughs> It must have taken them a really long time to get there. Like, probably days, judging by how fast they're flying. And the monster's still there just doing this, so presumably he's been doing this the entire time. They catch that monster, so they're on to the next one. And while they're flying, Jean-Pierre wants to have some alone time with Amanda, but Gunto won't shut up. But don't worry, guys, Jean-Pierre's got a quick fix for that. Did you understand what he said? Mm -hmm. Don't say a word, Gunto. Would you like a candy, Gunto? Mmm. Mmm. No. Yeah, he drugs him. Jean-Pierre straight up drugs this kid. You know that moment when you're trying to Netflix and chill with Bay, but her stupid little twerp brother won't shut up, so you drug the little boy? Just sneak a little bit of horse tranquilizer into his ice cream, and then it's Netflix and chill time, baby. <laughs> After drugging her little brother, Jean-Pierre also convinces Amanda to drug her uncle and his partner because they're too old to be fighting monsters and they should rest while Jean-Pierre and Amanda try to catch the other monsters. This dude is really into drugging folks, huh? Seems to have a lot of sleepy drugs just on hand at a moment's notice. Oh, oh no! What was that? Oh. No one back home will believe this. Wow. Uh, a monster! Uh, 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 uh. Junky camera made in China! Battery dead already! Oh, this is ridiculous! Chinese man wearing a shirt with Chinese takeout on it, and he's complaining about Chinese manufacturing. <laughs> Another A-plus character from What's Up! I'm going to have a nap. I'm very, very tired. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, mon chéri. My sweet little Amanda. Man, I really feel for Amanda here. This dude just won't shut up. <laughs> she looks just so like beaten down and defeated and he just won't stop talking. Either that or they just forgot to record Amanda's lines for this scene, which I feel like is equally possible. So they made her just like staring wistfully out the window. I keep comparing this movie in my head to the actual movie Up, just imagining if these things happened in Up. Listen, Russell, I know we got off on the wrong foot on this adventure, but I think what I've come to realize is, you know, I'm just not used to taking care of someone. I've lived alone for so long, but, you know, I think that you're really what I've been needing all this time. You're like a grandson to me. I can't imagine living life without you. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I love you, Russell, okay? And I miss my wife, and there's some character development going on there, too. Also, are you okay? Because you haven't said anything in the past two minutes. You've just been staring off into space, actually staring right into that camera. I don't know why... Why is there a camera filming us? You've just been looking directly into the lens of a camera. There's a camera guy, a whole crew, actually, I just noticed. Is that, Are we in a movie? Is this a movie? Is this the movie Up? Is this the movie Up, guys? Hey, guys, it's me, the old man from Up. I just figured out that I'm in a movie. So by now, they've captured all three of the monsters. They're just floating around. They've got the monster still in this little force field outside the house, and... <laughs> Hey, what's he doing in there? Why is he in the bubble with the monsters? How come everyone else gets to be in the house, but the guy from China has to be in the bubble? I don't want that Chinese guy in there with my monsters. He didn't even say anything when I showed him the cookie. Did you try showing him a fortune cookie? That could work. What do you mean, Unc? <laughs> Never mind. That was just a bad joke. Pay no attention. Where's the Frenchman? We can't let him close to the super energized rock. He's a dangerous criminal. This little rock here, Monsieur Crum? Oh, Jean Pierre has the rock again! Lavender. And he figured out how to say lavender. <laughs> There's nothing like a little practice. And the worst part is, now he's had plenty of time to figure out what he's gonna do when he hypnotizes everybody. So, I, there's no telling what he's got planned now. Kuto, blow kisses. Oh. 
Okay, I don't really know what's going on here. So everybody is hypnotized except Gunto. He was wearing sunglasses, so I guess that protected him from being hypnotized, but he's trying to pretend like he is. So Jean-Pierre is telling him to blow kisses, but Gunto's just going like, Ugh! and that's how he's pretending to be hypnotized. Like, what is he trying to do? Is he trying to fart? Is he trying to poo? Guto, I ordered you kisses. <laughs> Okay, that time it looked like he did poo. It looked like he was surprised because he poo- he pooped. Is that what they think blowing kisses is? Anyway, Gunto manages to get the rock away from him and then they fix everything and the day is saved. Well then, that's good because I want to introduce you to my new boyfriend, Chen Ling, the cute Chinese gentleman. Hello, everybody. But did you really have to pick someone who might be smarter than me? Wow, you mean he could be that smart? Huh. I thought he was just gonna make us some dinner! Stop! <laughs> Please stop! This movie is driving me insane. Luckily, it is over. And now it's time to talk about our sponsor, HelloFresh. Guys, this is gonna sound kind of crazy, but... I like food. I especially like when I get to eat food. But what I don't like is going to the grocery store. Which is why before I discovered HelloFresh, I used to eat out way too much. Like, we would go out to dinner, like, every other night. It was bad. We just kept getting tired of cooking the same thing over and over every week. But now that we have HelloFresh, our dinner game has gotten so much easier. We've been able to break out of our recipe rut with HelloFresh's delicious recipes. They send you a variety every week, and you get to choose which recipes you actually get. It might seem like ordering a box of prepped meals would cost more than going to the grocery store and picking things out for yourself, but you can actually save 28% by using HelloFresh as opposed to going to the grocery store. You also get to waste less food and waste less time because HelloFresh pre-portions everything for you. So they'll only send you the exact amount of each ingredient that you'll need to complete each meal, which is great because I know when we're cooking things, sometimes we'll end up with just like half an onion or like an entire box of breadcrumbs because we only use like a cup. And then it's like, well, now I have to make something else with breadcrumbs and an onion, half an onion. You can mix it up or put less stress on your by adding even more meals every week or even lunches. And on top of that, I found it to be a much more sustainable option than going to the grocery store. Pretty much all of the packaging that HelloFresh comes in is recyclable. So if all that sounds good to you, use my code TRULYGREG80 to get $80 off plus free shipping on your first box with purchase. Go to HelloFresh.com to redeem and for more details. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and thank you to you guys for checking out HelloFresh. And now, this is the end of the sponsored segment. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join Greg. Greg is what I call my subscribers. We're the fastest growing army on the internet. Please don't look that up, it's illegal. If you look it up, I will arrest you. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. This video is over now. Over now. Go find something else to watch. Or just watch this video. I know we had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. But you can't stay on this end screen forever. This video is over now, yeah. over now, so why are you still watching this?